Alright, what's good y'all? It's me, Coach Vaughn and Paul. On this episode of Young Black America, we're going to talk about Dr. Umar Johnson, black education, and black collaboration. Let's go. Welcome to America. Welcome to America. Welcome to America. happening y'all coach born here with one of the other members of the whole averages failure movement my boy Paul Bissant I showed y'all him on uh, introduced y'all to him in the last video not really introduced y'all for real but y'all saw like an image of him uh, when I spoke with Randall last time uh, so Paul is gonna really be joining in with us on a whole lot of stuff going forward so will Randall and we got a couple of other people on the team and we're gonna try to grow and pour as much into you as I always say as we can all right so we want to jump right into it. We can't be as loud as maybe we would like to because we are in a library, <laughs> um, unfortunately. So we're just going to do what we can, volume-wise. But we hope that, uh, but we hope that you still see the passion. We hope that you still see, um, you know, the intent and still get some good information and some good content. So, some of the, hey man, sorry, <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I'm don't taking off the. Hey uh, man, you know I ain't tripping this whether you on phone or not. I don't even care for ring. I'm, I just want to make sure that we get to those notes because my phone is dead, yeah. unfortunately, y'all. Died. Y'all can see I'm trying to push the button right here. Can't get it to work. All right? Literally died as we were trying to start the video, okay? And I had some notes in there about what we were going to talk about, what we'll jump into, what we we're going to discuss. First of all, I hope that y'all saw... I probably need to not talk this much before we jump right into the conversation, but yeah, I'm going to uh, work on that, all right? <laughs> I'm going to work on that. So jumping right into it, if y'all didn't see it, the interview, I've seen, now, some of y'all might know who Dr. Umar Johnson is. I listened to one of, to like, I think he did one or two interviews on Power 105.1, maybe a year, maybe a year or two ago. Um, a powerful brother. But, man, Paul had just, listened. I didn't even know he was on, on The Breakfast Club again. And Paul, a couple of days ago, had seen the interview that he did with The Breakfast Club and then um, reminded me of it. And I went and looked at it literally this morning. And my goodness, that thing was powerful, right? Mm -hmm. So if you get a chance to, to, to see it or if you have a, the, uh, the ability to go check it out on YouTube, go ahead and check it out. But we want to talk about and discuss some things. And maybe like Dr. Umar Johnson, he's real, real deep. So what we want to do is kind of take some of that stuff and contextualize it in a way that's more consumable for uh, maybe some of you who, who aren't necessarily um, as academically uh, versed as a Dr. Umar Johnson, right? So we want to make sure that everybody's able to have understanding. So let's talk about that for a little bit, Paul. So yeah. you would want to show sort the of video. What were some of the things, what were some of the concepts that stood out to you from the video, from the interview with The Breakfast Club and Dr. Umar Johnson? And um, yeah, what, what, st what stood out to you maybe the most? Honestly, probably the first thing I think about is when he spoke about the idea that we have to do more than just protest, mm -hmm. you know, as far as the Black Lives Matter movement goes. Mm -hmm. um, the protests, we've been using protests almost as if that's the end goal, mm -hmm. but uh, really protests are just a means to an end. Mm -hmm. And so he talked about kind of identifying really what the end goal is out of the protests and like what's the next steps. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of the things that he spoke about was, uh, you know, we have to invest in our own banks. We have to put mm -hmm. our money in. Mm -hmm to black banks, mm -hmm. and that's one of the things I know we talked about that. Um, you know, I'm going to open an account this week mm -hmm. in one of our local banks mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And so... And I already did. I opened up an account with um, one of the local banks, also community banks. I'll still probably have some, um, you know, funds elsewhere mm -hmm. uh, because you still kind of do need, like if you travel or what have you, still need to be able to have access and dealing with smaller banks, you may not have as much access. But, right. you know, the goal is to at least <clears throat> build up um, the banks that you have within your community, all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he explained, you know, the importance of banks in the local community. Mm -hmm. You know, when you put your money in a bank, the bank then can go and loan out like three to four times that right. amount right. to, you know, individuals, whether it's for to purchase a home, whether it's for small business loans or things like that. And that can really be reinvested back into the community and really help build the community up. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that he spoke about that really, you know, spoke to me, I would mm -hmm. say, and mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And so that's something that we could really think about. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, one of the key things that, and what it sounds like you're saying is, thing, action steps that need to be taken aside from just protesting. I thought that was a powerful point also, yeah. because I, it, it seems like it's very easy to just protest. You know what I'm saying? But protesting at the end of the day is, is just noise. Now, this was an interesting pers perspective for me that I think came out of it because many people are asking like, okay, protest, like what's the point of protesting? All we doing is protesting, protest, 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 protest. And I like what Dr. Uh, Johnson brought out because for those who think that protesting is not necessary, what he said was that protesting is still your marketing. So if you understand anything right. about business, <clears throat> like even though you do have a product, even though there are things that you might be doing already, it doesn't mean that you stop marketing. It doesn't mean that you stop advertising. And so what, what he said was that it, it, when you protest, it's marketing to the world what it is that you stand for, the injustices that you're no longer willing to take so that the world can kind of observe and see and that it's not just something that's happening in secret because what happens in business is if you can have the greatest product in the world, you can have the greatest cause in the world, the greatest service in the world, but if that thing isn't marketed, and I know firsthand because as I've tried to learn what it takes to become an entrepreneur, I realize that one of my weaknesses as an entrepreneur, truthfully, is I'm not the greatest marketer, in my opinion. I'm not the greatest advertiser. So I'll usually have good information, I'll usually have good service or a good product, but putting that thing in the face of the people that I'm trying to influence to buy at some point, I'm not the greatest at doing that, right? So it's the same thing with protesting. Protesting is at least the marketing or the advertising of what you're trying to make happen. However, if you market and you advertise, and but at the end of the day don't have a product, product yeah. to give or an action right. or a service <clears throat> to give, then it, it means nothing. As a matter of fact, people begin to um, no longer pay attention to your marketing because they know that you don't have anything good to offer them in, at the end. Right. And ultimately, that's a lesson we learned from all the great companies is you have to start with the product. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what part of what he was talking about is we have to understand what the goal is. Mm -hmm. What is the end result? What is, what is it that we're trying to produce mm -hmm. from the protests? Mm -hmm. You know, the protests are important to, you know, project the right message and project the right image. But what is that image mm -hmm. and what is it that we're mm -hmm. trying to do for our communities? You know, how is it that we can really build up our communities and of course one of the things we talk about is through education mm -hmm. you know and that's partially what we're doing here mm -hmm. is you know we have to be able to educate our community yeah. and to build up our community that way and not only just education but the right kind of education mm -hmm. you know not the school education that we right. get but so we can use that to segue then right so you're talking about education and I want them to, I, I didn't even give you a chance to explain to like the audience what it is that you do, but I want you to tell them what is it that you do professionally. Um, what did that like? What was your educational experience? Um, how has all that played into your ability to be successful or to live the life that you're living right now? You know what I'm saying? What are some of the things that they need to consider, especially for those of you who you know like I'm I'm 32, Paul is 30, or Paul will be 30 later on. 20, yeah, 20, my bad, my bad. <laughs> but um. But for those of you who might be younger, for those of you, if, if a younger person watches this and you might be considering school or what have you, considering a major, what kind of field you want to work in, what, what, are, what, what are you doing now? What was the school path or the education path you know, that led to you doing that? Would you do it again? What was the value in it? And what would be your advice to the people that's listen, that are listening? Yeah, right now I'm in music. And so uh, I'm mainly an organist, you know, choir director. I work for churches, two churches in the DMV area. And um, so I have a bachelor's undergrad degree, I have a master's degree, and I'm working on a doctorate now. But um, so the path that I took, I think was a good one for me, just because I wouldn't necessarily change anything because of the people that I interacted mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. along the way. Mm -hmm. And you know, at different points, the key people that I've interacted with who have kind of formed and shaped my education, um, both you know, in school and outside of school. Mm -hmm. But, you know, looking back, if I'm somebody like 18 year old starting off now, unless you really know exactly what you want to do mm -hmm. and you have a very solid understanding mm -hmm. that what you want to do, like if it's in the medical field or if it's in a certain specific field that needs, you know, advanced degrees and those kind of things, 
especially if you have to deal with student loans, and I know mm -hmm. that's where we're heading in this mm -hmm. conversation, because mm -hmm. student loans are just Crazy. not the way to go. You know? they're, uh, as I said earlier, they're a form of, of slavery, essentially. Yeah. And so anything that you can do to really avoid taking out student loans mm -hmm. as much as possible is really the way I would go. Mm -hmm. you know? So if you don't really know what you want to do yet, um, you know, you're graduating high school, you know, go to a community college, you know, look for a, a cheap, inexpensive education path, you know, a state school, you know, where you can get a lot of funding and scholarships and those kind of things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just try and build up work experience, varied work experience, you know, internships and those kind of things. And just kind of explore different areas, learn how to run a business, mm -hmm. you know, learn mm -hmm. sales, learn marketing, learn all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Uh, because those are really the values that make you marketable as an individual to right, companies, right. you know. Unless, right. like I said, unless you're going into something very specific. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going into music, it depends what area of music. If you're going to mm -hmm. classical music, good luck. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you definitely want to try and go to you know top schools and those uh -huh. kind of things. But uh -huh. at the end of the day, you got to think about you know, kind of do a cost mm -hmm. analysis mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just kind of see, you know, try and stay away from student loans as much as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can talk to that mm -hmm. as well, but. Yeah, oh, well, you know, so with my experience, and I think it's so crucial, you know, one of the things that we're going to be trying to do with the whole averages failure um, theme is really uh, um, move it into a direction to where we're helping you not just to be not you know with in in the black community we tend to be consumers uh, i think i talked about this in the last um talk that i did with randall but we tend to be consumers and we tend not to be contributors we tend not to be the ones that own we tend not so we tend to spend money and not be the ones making money right um we tend to have only uh, the ability to create for us or, or to provide for ourselves but not really to go beyond that and provide for the next generation so as I think about student loans in my experience, one of the things that I'm grateful for are my parents. Because truthfully, my parents, I should, like, I have such a large amount of student loans left still to be paid, right? And truthfully, they would be a whole lot larger, they would be a whole lot more <coughs> if it hadn't been for my parents. Yeah, sorry y'all, the camera. Cause these DSLRs, they only record for like 12 minutes at a time, <laughs> right? So um, eventually I might have to move to the Panasonic or, you know, upgrade, but. Mm -hmm. We're using what we, what we can with what we have. And we even talked about that like for a bit, like using what you can yeah. um, to accomplish what you have, using what you have to accomplish what you can. Um, but one of the things I was talking about my student loans, and I'm so blessed because my parents were really able to um, pay my way through my undergrad experience. So if I didn't have them, then my debt would be a lot greater, right? And the thing about it is if I'm advising any students going forward, I'm telling them, yo, go to a community college first. You know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and mind you, I love, like, yo, Stony Brook, shout out to Stony Brook University all, like, all day. You know what I'm saying? All day, every day. Shout out to Stony Brook University. Shout out to Oakwood University um, and Andrews. Andrews University. You know what I'm saying? But, yo, at the end of the day, I don't feel like, when I look at the amount of my friends who are you know, work, looking for jobs, what have you. Most of my friends, in my opinion, it seems like they're under, underemployed, all right? Um, so you go going to school for four years, you coming out with major debt, and you can't even find a job in the area that you study. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying don't get the education, but what I am saying is that maybe it would be best, my advice would be, listen, go to a, um, go to a community college. Start at a community college while you, you can work somewhere retail and pay your way through a community college, right? It's cheap enough to do that. Get good grades for two years at a community college, then find maybe a state school or a cheaper school that, um, that you can pay your way through if you're unable to get, uh, let's say, uh, grants or if you're unable to get financial, um, not financial aid, but if you're unable to get scholarships. Yeah. Do that because you don't want to come. It makes no sense to go get the degree, then you might have a, a, what we consider, let's say, a prestigious job but you have the prestigious job, but you still in just as much debt as somebody. Matter of fact, you're in more debt than the person who never went and went to school, right? And for a lot of the jobs out there, unless it's a specific, like thing, like being a doctor or being a lawyer or or, or being a nurse, where you have to go to a specific kind of school, 
a lot of stuff you can learn through the internet nowadays. You know what I'm saying? You can hop on YouTube and learn what it takes to become an an, an administrative assistant or something like that. You know, so so what we're trying to do is help our community set itself up for long term greatness, and it's hard to do that when generation after generation you just in debt. Yeah. You know, you educated, but you're in debt. You know, and trust me, I know that firsthand. Like, yo, I know what I still know what it feels like to feel like I'm enslaved by debt. You know, what I'm saying my options, what I'm able to do, this guy, <laughs> what I'm able to do is so much more limited because of the debt amount that I still have to pay back. You know, what I'm saying I just want to save the next generation from having to go through that, man. So, right. yeah. Right. So speaking of that, you know, uh, and I touched on my parents for a little while. I want to get your perspective on this. When we talk about so again, Umar Johnson talked about this. He said, um, one of the challenges that we have in the black community is that we think a lot from the perspective of the, of the individual and we're always looking out for self, we're looking out for the ind individual and we have lost the notion and the value of looking out for the collective and for the community, right? Um, and for the group, the whole. And I just want to get your thoughts and perspective on that yeah. for the good um, averages failure nation out there. Yeah, because he brought it up in relate, relation to not only like the protests and things like that, but mm -hmm. like the boycotts, because he mentioned the idea of, you know, how we they used to do boycotts back in the 50s and 60s and mm -hmm. things like that, because everybody was really united. Everybody understood that they were oppressed, mm -hmm. you know. Nowadays, we don't really understand mm -hmm. that, you know what I'm saying? We have the, the image and the, mm -hmm. uh, the idea that we have, you know, certain freedoms mm -hmm. and we have certain things, and so, because we have certain pockets of individuals who are successful mm -hmm. in our black community, and then there are those that are not, so there's kind of a confusion as mm -hmm. to, well, maybe it's if I just work hard enough and if I do, you know, this and this, that I can kind of raise myself up. And so we kind of just look out for ourselves, you know, and not really develop that sense of thinking about building up the larger community, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Even those that are successful, honestly, uh, you know, they could be doing a lot more mm -hmm. in terms of giving back and mm -hmm. really helping to build up our mm -hmm. communities. Mm -hmm. But what we were thinking about, what I was talking about was, um, you know, kind of growing up in a Caribbean household. And I know a lot of people, you know, we both grew up in Caribbean households. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a Haitian household. And, you know, my parents kind of raised me with the mentality, I don't know, Caribbeans have a different mentality because they just came over here, you know, kind of first generation. And so, their mentality is really not tied in necessarily to the oppression of mm -hmm. the black American community mm -hmm. necessarily, you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I was raised with that mentality like, you know, don't just think about yourself, but you're, you're th raised thinking about, you know, giving back to your community mm -hmm. and serving your community and what you do, you know, what you, whatever you decide to do, you have to think about giving back and ways to give back to your communities. You know, our parents were both active in the church and things mm -hmm. like that. And so that was just part of our upbringing. Mm -hmm. And so, but that's not necessarily the case, you know, in the larger black community. And so I think we have to really kind of instill those values mm -hmm. into, you know, some of the young kids coming up. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that is just, listen, if you don't have a specific thing that you really passionate about it, you know what you want to do, Learn how to run a business. Learn how to start mm -hmm. business. You know, we need more entrepreneurs mm -hmm. in our black community. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, that's what I'm learning now. Mm -hmm. You know, the secret to building wealth in this mm -hmm. country is business ownership. Yeah. Not only business ownership, but investing. Yeah. Investments. And I think that's so crucial because, and again, going past just the individual, but thinking about, you know, um, the others within the community also, right? So when you think about somebody who gets employment, mm -hmm. uh, employment... I can be employed, but I can't pass my employment down to my son or my daughter. Right. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> but what I can do, and this is how you create gener generational wealth, right, is you can pass your business on down to your son or your daughter, right? Your, your business can survive you, just you and can provide for a bunch of other people, right? Mm -hmm. Not only that, but even, let's not even talk about just generation after generation. Your business now can be somewhere that if somebody needs an internship, because right? they're in yeah. school. Other cultures for years have been able to say, yo, listen, 
my son needs an internship. I got a connection with my boy Johnny over here. Here, you, John, um, little Johnny Jr., you're going to go over to Ted and, uh, and you're going to intern at Ted's company, right? Because they own it, yeah. right? But one of the challenges that we've had in the black community is that because we don't own much, we have to go searching for internships, right? And then if somebody needs, needs work or a job, we have to go searching for it. We don't just have somebody that, that we're cool with enough yeah. to just be able to say, yo, listen, like, my son needs an internship. Can he do it at your company? You know, and I think that we, we would put ourselves in a lot more of a powerful position if we're able to um, to do yeah. some of that stuff. And I'm gonna take also thinking about the collective, right? And and I'm just you know I'm I'm taking up the challenge because I feel like Dr. Umar Johnson challenged me in a, in a number of ways. But um, you know I always feel like I had the best ideas in the world. And so one of the things that I've de I've decided to do is to open my brand up a little bit more, right? So really for, for the past four and a half years or so, it's really Average's Failure, Coach Born Edutainment has been all about like just my ideas, just what I'm bringing to the table, just what I can do. And I realized like we have to get outside of this thinking that we're just successful or we just get to the top by ourselves. And Matt, yeah. I love it because we were talking, man, that was so dope. We were talking in the car about um, the fact that when you look at Beyonce, like it, the whole world is on Beyonce right now, right? But you can't, you got, don't forget that Beyonce, like Beyonce is Beyonce because she had a team called Destiny's, yeah, Destiny's Child. Child right? You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Beyonce is Beyonce because she had a team. Uh, her father and her her mother were on her to help create who that was, right? It's not just <clears throat> something that she just did on her own. Who are some of the other people? Um, LeBron James, right? So mm -hmm. he's on top of the basketball world right now. But LeBron James isn't on top of the basketball world just because of LeBron James. LeBron James can't be LeBron James if Kyrie Irving isn't there to help get the Cavs to that level, right? LeBron James can't be LeBron James if he doesn't go down to... Um, to down to Miami to team up with uh, Chris Bosh and D Wade in order to get the Ooh. championships, right? He, he's born. <laughs> I, I'm, and I'm not, you know, mad respect for LeBron James. Mad respect. I've never been a Cavs fan or a Heat fan when they made that move, yeah. but still respect the dude, right? But but on his own, like he would be nothing. And but but I had to, I have to get out of the mentality that I'm just going to climb to the top. You know what I'm saying? Just simply by relying on what I'm able to do in and of myself only. So what I've decided mm -hmm. to do is take up the challenge that, and I've been doing this for a while. I think you guys have been able to, well, no, you might not be able to, but behind the scenes, I've been doing this slowly but surely, where I've been opening up my brand a little bit more for other people to have input, for other people to have a chance to have, you know, um, stake in it somewhat to, to, to help direct where we're going to go with it. And so that this will also uplift them and benefit them and allow them to use their skills and talents and ideas, etc. also so that we all grow from it. Yeah. Right. So it's, it, it takes everybody, man. It takes everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's exactly what we're talking about with, in terms of the collective. It's not just, you know, what you want to do, think about serving your community, but also thinking about how can you harness your talents and those of uh, those talents of the people around you, mm -hmm. the people in your inner circle? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, do you guys mm -hmm. have complementing mm -hmm. skills, mm -hmm. complementary skills and gifts and talents <coughs> that you can uh, kind of pool together to create? You know, whether it's a brand, whether it's a business, whether whatever it is, yeah. but um, being able to collaborate and being able to um, you know find different people who can kind of complement the skills that you have and gifts that you have to mm -hmm. really create something larger than what you could do on your own you yeah. know and, and that's the thing you know a lot of times we look at those individuals and we think you know they made it all by themselves and they did it all by themselves and so i have to try and do it all by myself but now you know focus on what, uh, focus on what you're good at you know focus on your your skill your gift and maximize that to the best that you can and then surround yourself with people who can complement your gift you know what I mean? so that's something that we gotta really do. And that's something that we're trying to do ourselves.